believe it. Yer the world means from our studio BGI TV, Baba Bagede Imo TV. I am yours faithfully, Mori Rebila Lawa. First are the major headlines for the world news. Breaking, Daily Momodu declares interest to run for president in 2023. Meet IU. Present, present candidates that will be acceptable by all, group tells Indigo. Majority of Nigerians, Pora, Onda Buari, Abia, ex SSG. Suspected quality is fuel girl in Delta, hope out eyes don't body by roadside. Nigeria to pay more for petrol subsidy as oil hits $85. The man who allegedly maimed his three daughters and dumped them in the freezer has been arrested. Police rescue three female kidnapped victims in play two. FG sends six man delegation to Zamfara, says Sterry's days number. And to foreign, UAE opens visa application center in Lagos and to sport. I am not thinking about any record ahead of Sudan Clash, says Ewawa. Now the news in details. Frontline journalist and publisher Dele Momodu Thursday met with national chairman of the People's Democratic Party, PDP, Senator Ayo Chia Ayu, with a declaration of interest to run for the office of the president in the 2023 election. Decked in black, Barbari Gal with a cap to match, Momodu presented Ayu with a letter of interest describing himself as the best, most prepared aspirant to turn around the fortunes of the country. He enjoined the leadership of the country not to be asked in choosing the party's flag bearer, noting that 2023 offers the PDP the opportunity to seek the north of Nigerians to reposition the country. He vowed to not to be intimidated by money bags whose illegally acquired wealth has for many years done the country more harm than good. A social political group, Balance and Equity Group, has told the, show, the South East politicians to present a presidential candidate that would be acceptable to all the regions of the country. The group also cautioned politicians with bad track records to stay off 2023 elections, saying that Nigerians are wiser now and would not accept them. The founder and national coordinator of the group, Chris Arize, while addressing journalists in Onitsha, on Wednesday said the preparation for the 2023 presidential election should be about presenting the right and credible candidate with capacity to move the country forward. Arizia urge interested Southeast politicians and technocrats to declare their interest in the contest without further delay. He commended Ebony State's Governor Chief Dave Umai, former Senate President Ayim Pius Ayim, and former Abia State Governor Oji Uzo Kalu for declaring their interest urging other interested Igbo politicians and telecrats to declare interest as the best aspirant will be selected among them. Arisa pointed out that their declaration of interest and ambition had become very imperative because, according to him, the group is putting structures in motion to conduct a presidential interest debate for all the aspirants where they are going to select the best aspirant and present to Nigerians. They had a that big was not in support of any politician with suspicious track record, but someone that has an intellectual, physical, and moral capacity and capability. Former Secretary to Abia State's government, SSG, Dr. Eme Okoro, has decried the economic situation in the country, saying that majority of Nigerians are poorer now than when President Muhammadu Buhari came into power in 2015. The former SSG, who made the assertion during a press conference in Umaya, regretted that Nigeria had not recorded much progress under the current administration, especially in the key sectors of the economy, security, and infrastructure. He therefore advocated a new trajectory where Nigeria would elect patriotic leaders with a clear vision to lead the country out of the wounds come 2023. The former SSG expressed disappointment over the quality of legislation by members of the National Assembly, who he accused of failing to use their constitutional powers to compel the executive to sit up. This is a political stakeholders in Abia North have urged Senator Mao or Hua Bua, who represented the district in the 8th Senate to contest for the office in 2023.
a yet to be identified lady said to be in her early 20s has been murdered and her eyes removed from suspected quarters in Oguashiwoko in the annual child north local government area of Delta State. Community sources told correspondents on Wednesday that the court was found by the roadside along Ogulu Uno Road. Some people who passed the road early Tuesday morning saw the cops and raised the alarm and many people rushed down to see for themselves. The source noted that community vigilantes called the police who took the cops to a mug. The police public relations officer, DSP Bright Edafi, confirmed the incident. He said the police were alerted to the scene of the incident by community youth who discovered the corpse of the lady with two eyes removed. The DPO in Oguashiwoku confirmed the incident to correspondent and he said the corpse has since been taken to the mortuary. He noted that the police had commenced an investigation into the murdering of the lady. Oil prices continued their surge on Wednesday, hitting a two-month high and amid projections that lack of production capacity and limited investment in the sector could lift crude between $90 and $100 a barrel this year. Specifically, tight supply and hidden concerns about the potential heat to demand from the Omicron combined to jack up prices as Brent sold for $85.04 per barrel Yesterday, at the United States West Texas Intermediate, WTI, crude fixture futures were up to $82.90. But the news is both good and bad for Nigeria, which should ordinarily earn more foreign exchange from the sale of crude, but now has to contend with paying more for petrol subsidy. There is a positive relationship between the international prices of the commodity and the pump price of the petrol in Nigeria. On December 22nd, the National Assembly approved a 17.126 trillion naira budget for 2022 anchored on an oil price benchmark of $62 per barrel. The approved oil price assumption was higher than the $57 per barrel price that President Muhammad Buhari had proposed to the Parliament on October 7th, and also higher than the oil price benchmark of $40 per barrel adopted by the government for the 2021 budgets. You're still watching the world news from BGI TV and a story to come. A 52-year-old man who reportedly murdered his three daughters and dumped them in the freezer has been arrested by the police officers of the Nigerian police force in Enugu State. According to reports, one of the girls was the man's stepdaughter, while the two others where his biological children and unfortunately their life was caught short. Daniel Undukwe, the spokesperson for the police in Enugu State, however, maintained that adequate investigation will be carried out to know the truth behind the matter and also ensure that justice is served. It is quite as happening to know that a parent could do something brutal like this to his children. Still, one shouldn't be too quick to jump to a conclusion. Who knows? The man's case might be something beyond the ordinary because no one in his or our right senses would make sort of bloody move. We will update to you as more details unfold. May the souls of the departed rest in peace, says the story. It's coming again as breaking. The three female victims were on Thursday rescued in play two states less than 24 hours after they were abducted by gunmen. Two of the victims were identified simply as benefits and welfare. The Punch reported that the three persons were kidnapped when gunmen attacked their residential area in Bandi village, Barakinla, the LGA, on Wednesday evening. The bandits were said to have scared the community with sporadic gunshot before they escaped with their victims. However, one of the bandits was arrested by a security agents after the attack on the village located behind the Plateau State Polytechnic. The police public relations officer in Play Two States, Uba Ogaba, confirmed the release of the girl said to be students of the State Polytechnic to the porch in Jaws on Thursday. President Mohammed Buhari has described as extremely unfortunate the mass maiming of innocent people by bandits in Zamfara State as he conveyed his condolences and that of his government to the people over recent war incidents in some communities in the state. 
Buhari reiterated his earlier commitment to tackle the monster of terrorism head on, assuring that the terror will not survive for much longer. The president gave the assurance in a statement on Wednesday by his spokesman, Gal Bashir, who followed a condolence visit to Zafir State by a six man presidential delegation led by Minister of Defense Major General Bashir Magashi retired. Speaking during the visit by the presidential delegation, Governor Bello Matawali of Zafir State said, there was an urgent need for a review of the military's anti-terrorism strategy with introduction of modern equipment and technology. President of the Senate, Dr. Ahmed Lawan, also expressed concern over the escalating of innocent citizens by bandits in many parts of the country. Lawan emphasized that Nigerians were tired of hearing stories of carnages and challenged the military to live up to expectation by audibly addressing the myriad security issues facing the country. In an address to the governor, Commissioners Emias, the Chief George, and Grand Kadi legislators, council chairmen, and political leaders in Zamfara State, Buhari, who was represented by Magashi, expressed the strong determination of the federal government to get rid of the body who had now been classified as terrorists. The president said there will be no let up in the ongoing campaign in Turi, Zamfara, and other African states of the menace of the terrorists. Since they have no regard for the sanctity of life, so shall they be dealt with soon. Now to foreign story. The United Arab Emirates, UAE, has inaugurated a visa application and documents attestation center at the office of the UAE Consulate General in Lagos. This was disclosed to the media by the office of the UAE Consulate on Wednesday. The inauguration was led by the Consul General, Dr. Abdullah al mundus and was attended by the Special Advisor to the Lagos State Government on Sustainable Development Goals and Investment, Sholakbe Amon, Controller General of Immigration for Lagos State, Ahmed Aliyu, Country Manager of Emirates Airlines, Polos Lagos, Vice President of the Lagos Chamber of Commerce and Industry, Benga Ismail, Head of UAE Visa Center, Abdullah al kantani and several media houses. Leading the visitors on a tour of the center, Mandos reaffirmed that the UAE had worked towards fostering its bilateral relations with Nigeria. It said the vision to establish a visa and attestation office in the center of excellence has been in the works for a while now, Lagos being the economic capital of Nigeria with over 20 million in population. The center aims to put to ease the bilateral business processes between both countries. And finally, sports. Super Eagles interim coach Augustin Ogavon has stated that he is not thinking of making or breaking any records ahead of the clash with Sudan. Nigeria will battle the Falcons of Jigan in the second Group D fixture in the ongoing 2021 Africa Cup of Nations in Cameroon. Ahead of the clash, Ogavon who holds the record of his being the only Nigerian coach to have led the Super Eagles to win all three group ma phase matches at AFCON, told then African News that he was focused on winning the match rather than records. He said, I'm focused on winning against Sudan for now. I don't want to think about any record or how we go about our third map. Sudan is in focus now and we'll have to deal with that squarely. In 2006, Elwabon led the Super Eagles to a bronze finish at the continental showpiece in Egypt after beating Ghana, Zimbabwe and Senegal in the group stages. The former Eagles defender is also one of the only 15 Nigerian coaches to have taken charge of the national team, men, and also one of the 15 African coaches at this finals in Cameroon. As head coach, Ogobon has the most win record with the Super Eagles, winning nine of his 12 matches in Chad between 2005 and 2007, and is one of, I beg your pardon, and is one of only three coaches to have stretch an African country to the top 10 of the FIFA ranking, the other two being claimants Wester of and Egypt Asen Shata. Before we call it a wrap on the world news this hour, a people cap of the headlines. Delhi Momodu declares interest to run for president in 2023, meets Ayu. Presents candidate that will be acceptable by all, group tells Indigo. We also brought to you majority of Nigerians poorer under Buhari Abia X SSG. Suspected quote is killed girl in Delta for out eyes done by, by roadside. Nigeria to pay more for petrol subsidy as oil hits $85.
We also brought to you the man who allegedly maimed his three daughters and dumped them in the freezer has been arrested. Police rescued three female kidnapped victims in play two. FG sent six month delegation to Zafara, says tourism day is number and to foreign. UAE opens visa application center in Lagos and to sport AFCON. I am not thinking about any record ahead of student club, says Albert Moore. You can link up on our YouTube channel, Baba Pagide Imo. TV, can you subscribe and click on the notification bell with the option all for updates? And on Facebook, Bagede Imo with Alawiye Adebayo. Please like and follow the page. On Instagram, Bagede Imo underscore 22. For advert placement of your goods and services and product, coverage of events and function as well. The phone number right on your screen, streaming, is the number to dial. Good evening, good morning, and good afternoon from all where you're watching from. I am yours faithfully, Mo Rewe Rebi Lalawabi.